How's it going everyone? I'm Tom and welcome back to the Maverick Designs Woodworking Shop or just welcome if it's your first time here. Uh, today we're going to work on a custom closet built in. So in all honesty, this is actually me refilming this introduction because originally I was going to build this built in with a concealment compartment in it. Uh, it's something that I like to do. It's something that I do a lot of. It's something I kind of specialize in. It's kind of my niche for the items that I make and, and sell at craft fairs and gun shows and things like that. So I do that a lot. But as it turned out, it wasn't the right decision and I ended up not doing it. But basically what ended up happening was I ended up building the whole thing out of melamine and I chose melamine because we just recently painted the house and I don't know if you've ever repainted the entire inside of your house, but it's a lot of work. And once you do a bunch of painting, you really don't want to do any more painting for a long, long time. And I, that's what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do this thing built in with plywood or even a hardwood or anything like that and then have to go in and repaint it afterwards. I just didn't appeal to me at all. And we wanted it to be white, so I figured, oh, I'll just make it out of melamine. And it was really cheap. A sheet of melamine that I used to build it only cost me $43, which was great, you know, price-wise. But um, because of the way melamine is with hardware and, you know, you can't put hardware in and out, take, constantly taking it in and out, it doesn't take the hardware very well. And concealment compartments or concealment anything requires a substantial amount of hardware for you know, the hinges or whatever mechanism that you use to open it, the locking mechanisms and other things. And I realized that if I got this thing built and, and put all these holes in it and couldn't get it to work the way I wanted it to, it, I would literally have to destroy the entire thing and start all over from scratch if I needed to fix something in there. And I just didn't want to have to deal with that. And once I got it two thirds of the way done and I, I just happened to put the mirror back all the way against the wall, which you'll see in a, in a few minutes. But I, I kind of like the way it looked, you know, that's the way my wife originally wanted it. And occasionally she's right and she was in this instance. So that's the way we left it without <clears throat> the concealment compartment. So I took, I had to redo the intro. So, you know, I wasn't talking about the concealment compartment because that's, even though that I'm talking about the concealment compartment right now, but it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so if you're interested in those sorts of things, please be aware that I make a lot of that stuff, right? So in fact, in the, in the months to come, I'm going to be doing a lot of that stuff because I have some shows coming up that I have to get ready for. And I make a lot of concealment boxes and furniture, like coffee tables and end tables and, um, coat racks and other things. And I make a lot of that stuff without concealment boxes also, but, uh, I also do a lot of other different types of furniture. I have a CNC, there's gonna be some videos on that. Uh, I think you'll probably think the enclosure that I built for it's pretty cool when you see that. There'll be a shop tour video coming up very soon within the next probably two or three videos and you'll see what I'm talking about. I suspect that some people may want to have a video on that alone and by, by all means, if anything that you see in any of these videos you would like me to talk about in more detail or make a whole video about like the CNC enclosure or the miter station, which also has work that I need to do to it. Um, but let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do videos on all that stuff. But it is a lot of work, however, the editing takes a long time. At least it takes me a long time and it's difficult. I think I've gotten past the learning curve for it by now, but it does take a lot of time. I spend a lot of time late, late at night editing these videos to try to get them out in a timely manner. So please, if you if you would consider subscribing, I would really appreciate it because all of the views in the world, which I'm getting what I think there's a really good number of views, especially for a channel that just started, but none of that matters without subscribers at this point. So you would really help me out if you'd subscribe to the channel and I'd really appreciate it. But uh, anyway, let's, let's get started on this one. So as you can see, this is the closet space that I was referring to. We recently just repainted, mostly repainted the entire inside of our house. There's still some trim work to be done as you can see this is going to be going away at some point as well so that it matches the other trim um i'm not sure what i'm going to do with that yet maybe i will put door trim back onto it or maybe i will just make it drywall i don't know we'll see but uh, this is the space that we're going to be building inside today and 
what it is is it used to be a closet behind the entry door and the old, the original owners or the owners before me removed the door and they built this ugly very rudimentary bench at the bottom down here out of like two by fours and two by eights and then they took a huge mirror that barely fit in there from side to side and crammed it all the way to the back and it filled the whole space up with mirror and man that thing was a pain in the butt to get out of there let me tell you but uh, we got it out we got it painted and now my wife has decided she likes having a mirror there although we don't need one quite that big and we need space for other things like hanging jackets and that sort of thing so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be doing a built-in down here and at, or in here and at the bottom there's going to be a shelf with spaces underneath it to put backpacks because both of my kids have backpacks that they take back and forth to school I have a backpack that I use for work and if we don't have some place to put them they'll just end up in a jumble or all over the couch or you know whatever um, so this is gonna be where they're going to live and then above that shelf will be on either side an opening that's 48 inches tall give or take with a clothes rod, hanging hanging rod across the top where we so that we can hang jackets and you know whatever on either side. But in the center is going to be this 12 inch by 48 inch mirror. It will be inset into the cabinet. Uh, across the top again will be a uh, clothes hanging pole and then a, a shelf just above that for extra storage space going up to the top. So. Uh, that's what we're doing in there. Let's get started. The first thing I needed to do was to install the new blade that I had bought for this project onto my table saw. I was concerned about tear out, so I got an 80 tooth ultra finished Diablo blade to cut the melamine. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos for tips on cutting this stuff with the least amount of tear out because I very rarely work with melamine. Most people recommended a high tooth blade and or the use of tape to keep the tear out to a minimum. But then I came across a video by a channel called An American Artisan titled Cut Melamine with No Chips that recommended first making shallow scoring cuts across each face of the melamine before cutting all the way through it. That seemed like a really good idea to me, so that's what I went with. It ended up working really well and I had virtually no tear out at all, so shout out to An American Artisan and I highly recommend you check out his channel and watch his short video on this technique. I'll post a link to it in the description if you're interested. It's a little tedious with the constant raising and lowering of the blade, not to mention flipping the board over a couple of times to make every cut, but I eventually got into a rhythm with it and got everything cut with no tear out. If you're paying close attention though, you'll probably notice that I do get out of sync and make a few cuts in a single pass, but they all came out fine as well. I suspect that's due to the brand new 80 tooth blade I was using, but to stay on the safe side, I'd still recommend using the multiple pass technique if you really want to be sure that you get as little tear out as possible. Who knows if an older or fewer toothed blade will perform as well. Better safe than sorry if clean cuts are critical to your project. Once I finished cutting all my melamine pieces, I installed edge banding on my panels in order to cover up the exposed particle board cores and give my project the nice clean finished look I was going for. I had never done this before, but it's a pretty straightforward process that isn't difficult to learn. The edge banding is basically just a rolled up strip of melamine that has a heat activated adhesive laminated on one side. You just cut a piece to the length you need and center it on your workpiece. The board is approximately 3 quarters of an inch thick and the edge banding is about 7 eighths of an inch, so you'll have about a sixteenth overhanging each side when it's centered. Then you just use an iron on the melamine side of the banding to activate the adhesive and melt it into the exposed particle board. I did notice there is some nuance to this as you can overheat it and make the adhesive so runny that it doesn't stick well. And conversely, you can also not heat it enough and it will end up peeling off easily. It takes a little getting used to, but it's not rocket science and you'll get a good feel for it after a while. Once it's on, you'll need to trim off that 1 16th excess material. Now, this can be done a number of ways, one of which is to simply do it by hand with a razor blade, or you can buy a special tool for it. The razor blade method works, but it does take some practice and a steady hand, which I did end up getting decent at doing, but I opted to go the special tool route and bought this fast cap quad trimmer from Amazon, which I'll link in the description if you're interested. It also takes a little getting used to, and it isn't perfect, 
but it does work well once you get the hang of it. Basically, it has these steel cutters inside, and all you do is place it over the workpiece so that the edge banding sits in the grooves where the cutters are, squeeze it together, and then slide it along the workpiece to trim off the excess banding. It doesn't always get 100% of the overhang off due to a weak or uneven squeeze, so I ended up using a combination of sanding and trimming by hand with a razor blade to achieve the finish that I desired. Honestly, if you're not as picky as I am about things like that, you could just leave it the way it is after you use the tool, and I'm sure it would be just fine like that in most cases. But that's how I did it, and I was really happy with the results. Okay, so as every one of you, I'm sure, knows, um, nothing comes out perfect. As much as you want it to, or as hard as you try, nothing comes out perfect, and uh, this is no exception here today. I don't like it. I probably don't like it more than you do because <laughs> it really bugs me, and I, every time I look at this thing, I'm going to know it's there, but uh, um, I should have made these dados with the router table or with um, <clears throat> a plunge router, but... Uh, for various reasons, I, I didn't do that, and one of which was I really wanted to try this on the table saw. I'd never done it before, and it worked out okay. It worked pretty good, um, but clearly I didn't have the right blade for making dados. You need carbide um, tips with flat tips. The blades need to have flat tips on them, and uh, these are angled, so it left little grooves and mounds and the, all the way down on the inside that I had to clean up with a chisel and my chisels are horribly cheap and not at all sharpened um, <clears throat> because I don't do a lot of hand stuff but I guess I'm gonna have to start because this is really irritating me but basically what happened was cleaning that up I had a little tear out right here and right there and up here on this end it's not a huge deal because I'm just gonna put it on the bottom of the bottom shelf and unless you're crawling around on the floor looking up underneath there you'll never see it but um, I just wanted to point out to you that you know not everything can be perfect and either you have to try to fix it or you overcome it in some way and in, in this case I'm gonna do it by putting it on the bottom where nobody can see it all right so I'm ready to start assembly um, we're gonna start at the base of the unit which is gonna be a box covered by the first shelf and then the cabinet in the center with the rod across it followed by another shelf on top basically but this will be the bottom and the foundation for everything aside from the um, supports that are going to be on the walls so what it's going to look like is um, I edge banded two sides of these and I did that because um, this side and this side is going to be covered but I wanted edge banding on the part that was going to be on the floor just to protect the floor more than anything uh, so it's gonna look like this and these center pieces are gonna go in here probably one about here one a little further up and one I don't know down in this area somewhere to give it as much rigidity as I can and I'm gonna be putting that together with these seven millimeter by 50 millimeter Confirmat screws. I just learned that they were called that when I ordered them about a week ago. Um, but you've probably seen these before. They're the same type of screws that you would get with like IKEA furniture because you're putting two pieces of particle board together, or you know, if it was MDF or anything, you know, like that, it needs these big fat threads on it in order to to grab it and hold on um, and I actually did a test on one earlier because I test everything because I have OCD um, but they work very well they hold very well and I'm happy with it so these are what we're gonna use we're gonna put two on each side of each one of these supports uh, going into this and we'll put that together once that's done I'll probably take it in there put it in place put the lower shelf on and the supports for the lower shelf and then the whole bottom piece will be done and then we'll start working on the center cabinet so what i ended up doing was 
I used a drill block to pre-drill a small hole for the special drill bit that you need for these screws to follow in order to ensure it was straight as possible since these Confirmat screws are pretty thick. The bit is pretty long and the material is only three quarters of an inch thick. I didn't want one of these blowing out through the side of the melamine panel because it wasn't perfectly straight. So I added the extra step of pre-drilling with the drill block. Like I just mentioned, you need a special Confirmat screw drill bit for these screws. It's a lot like a typical countersink bit in that it has a drill bit that's about the diameter of the screw shank minus the threads, but then it has this extra shoulder to accommodate for the shank of the screw expanding to a larger size between the top of the threads and the head of the screw. Then at the top it flares out to drill the countersink for the screw head. You basically just drill down to the flat top of that countersink flare so that it's um, flush with the top of your workpiece and then you'll have a perfect hole for your confirm mat screws and the head of the screw will be perfectly flush or maybe a little sub flush depending you know how deep you go. Uh, it was an extra 25 bucks that I would rather not have invested in a tool that I have very little need for but it works well and accommodates the easy installation of these unusual screws. And if I ever do need one again in the future I'll have one on hand now. I will note, however, that the comments for this bit did mention that it dulls fairly quickly for a $25 specialty bit, so you may need more than one if you'll be using a lot of these screws on multiple projects. I'll leave a link for this bit in the description below if you're interested. So, remember what I said about making mistakes? Yeah, so I'm gonna have to take this whole thing apart and do some more work on it. This is what happens when you get in a hurry and you don't pay attention to what you're doing. So I just noticed that this was a little high and I was thinking, oh, well, you know, I guess it's, you know, that 30 seconds of a lip there is not going to cause me too much of a problem. And then I realized I made a fundamental mistake putting this together. When I made the shelf, I dadoed it. That dado has to fit over these. These have to be recessed to an, in order to accommodate that. And I didn't do that. I think I'm going to take these all back off and replace them. I have a couple of extras. <sighs> Take your time. Don't get in a rush. Measure twice, cut once, all that stuff. This is what happens when you don't. I'm gonna add another couple of extra hours to this that I wasn't planning on doing. So luckily these two, I'm going to be able to leave them alone. Um, I wanted this to be all the way up against the shelf board, but that's not going to happen. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all these with wood filler. You're not going to see them anyway. Um, and then when I put these back on again, I'll just offset them forward and down a little bit. <clears throat> and that will fix that problem. So I went ahead and filled those holes with wood filler, making sure that I did it from both sides so that it was filled completely through. And later on, I'll probably get some of those little white round stickers to put on there to cover them up and probably the screw holes as well. Okay, I'm gonna let these dry up for a minute and then I'll give them a light sand and that'll be that. In the meantime, I'm gonna put the top on and or the shelf and try to see what i'm going to do from here so you remember this spot that i screwed up the worst spot is here on the end that is going to go on the bottom in the back so it'll never be seen The reason I dado these was not because I just wanted to be a cool woodworker with some 
you know, extra joinery. But because it's gonna get, it's gonna be very difficult to get fasteners on these. So instead, my plan is to use wood glue. Okay, so quick update. I got this toolbox and put it up here. This thing weighs, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds probably to hold it. And then what I did was I took the piece that I want to put in there. I think instead of putting two, I'm just going to put one. I think it was overkill to put four of them in there. This thing will hold together just fine with the one. So I stuck it in there and I kind of, I put it about an inch forward of where the other one was at. So it's more or less in the middle. It's about five inches back. <clears throat> it looks good. I like it. The other good thing about that is, is it's going to completely cover the holes on the inside that were there. So anyway, I got that in there. I've got this clamp holding it in place. So what I'll do is I'll pull this stuff back off. I'll get another clamp up there to hold it tighter and then I can screw it in. I lost my pencil. No big deal. It's probably the 7,000th pencil that I've lost in here. But this time I got it on video. I am going to find out where that pencil went. Tired of losing pencils. So I got that support all screwed in and secured and it ended up being plenty of support for what I needed and I never did find that pencil. I swear something's eating them. Okay, so I did a quick sanding on the holes and stuck this thing in here and realized I forgot about something else. Um, not a problem, I just need to make a modification. I forgot that I had that uh, baseboard molding going around the bottom inside there. So I need to cut out some relief spots on the back of those legs so that it will sit all the way against the wall. Okay, we're back in the shop and I'm going to make those relief cutouts back here for that crown molding. I debated for a moment whether I wanted to do this with the jigsaw or the router and I ended up going with the router. Okay, so these cuts came out great. Um, nice and clean, better than I thought they would actually. They look really good so i'm very happy with that so i'm gonna put this thing back in the closet and uh, keep going with my installation okay so i got this thing back in here i've got the shelf on it it looks really good i'm very happy those cutouts worked perfectly it sits all the way flush against the wall now it looks the only issue and i knew that this was going to be an issue is that the walls are not straight so I'm going to have to find some way to fill that gap. It's not much. That uh, forward part of it in the worst area, it's probably a half an inch. I don't know. Once I get it all in there and together, I'll see if it bothers me. Uh, if it does, I'll probably just make some trim to go over that and you won't see it. But uh, I'm very happy with this. All I got to do is get this um, shelf glued on and then I can start building the rest of it. Okay, next I'm going to cut the clothes hanger rod or whatever you call it. I opted to get a metal one because I have some wooden ones in some other closets and they're all drooping and I don't want that to happen. So I got a metal one. Um, what I did was I took a piece of PVC off camera and to, to check the the actual distance from wall to wall because it's very difficult to accurately measure from one flat distance to another like this. Um, so I wanted to make sure. So I cut this a little oversized on the miter saw and checked it and then a little bit less, checked it a little bit, checked and worked it way, worked my way down. And it turns out that it's 37 inches in that spot where that's gonna go. So I'm gonna cut it just slightly less than that. And I'll mark it at just a little less than 37 inches. And to cut it, I'm going to use this big pipe cutter that I have. I don't even remember what I bought this for, but it's going to come in handy right now. I was thinking about you doing it with a hacksaw and then I absolutely hate using a hacksaw. Uh, and as I was debating that, I realized that I forgot that I still have this or that I have this because I don't, you know, cut a lot of pipe. So, so uh, 
and this is gonna work out well for me. So what you do is you put it on there, you tighten it down slightly, give it a rotation, tighten it down a little bit more, give it another rotation, tighten a little more, so on and so on until you get all the way through the pipe. I'm gonna try not to put too much pressure on it. Okay, no, that looks pretty good. Nice clean cut, didn't have to fight through it with a hacksaw, and that's gonna work out good. All right, now I'm gonna drill the hole through one of the two uh, cabinet boards for the clothes hanger to go through. Um, I've opted to use a Forstner bit for that because I'm hoping that will give me the least amount of tear out. I also have a scrap piece of plywood underneath here to drill into and through, and hopefully I won't get too much breakout on the other side. Um, I am using a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit because the pipe is one and a quarter. So this is just the next size up. I don't want to have to be fighting with it when it's in there. We'd rather have it a little oversized. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'll drill these two holes and then move on to the next step. Okay. There's a little bit of tear out on the top side, but nothing I can't live with. And the bottom is perfect. All right. Once I got the second panel set up and marked, I realized that it, I would be better served if I just took the one that I had just drilled, clamped it on top of it together, and drilled the hole using that other hole as a guide so that it would be in exactly the same place. Okay, so I've got this thing mocked up here kind of temporarily so that I can pre-drill the holes for the fasteners that are going to go into the um, support braces that are going to be in the, in the back and top and bottom of this box. All right, let's do that. So I did these exactly the same way I did all the other ones. I pre-drilled a small pilot hole with the drill block to make sure I had everything nice and straight and then used the special drill bit to pre-drill the holes for the screws following those pilot holes. And I ended up only putting the three supports on the back of the box, which would go against the wall when installed and not on the top and the bottom. Um, the idea there was for the extra support for the concealment cabinet, but since I wasn't going to do a concealment cabinet, I decided I didn't need them and I certainly didn't want them because I didn't want to see them there. Um, and the dados would just hold all that stuff into place anyway. Particle board is extremely porous and I knew it would absorb a lot of the glue, so I applied it pretty generously and then installed the lower shelf onto the base. There wasn't a lot of squeeze out as I suspected and I cleaned up what there was with a damp cloth. I always have a damp cloth on hand when I'm gluing anything up because it really is the best, most efficient method of cleaning up excess wood glue without leaving any residue that can wreak havoc on your finish. Finally, I used a toolbox to put some pressure on it as it dried. After an hour or so, I removed the toolbox and put the center cabinet into place. I forgot to reposition the camera so that you could see it, but I installed the clothes hanger pole through the holes and across the top of the cabinet first and then rotated the cabinet with the pole in place, parallel to the dados. Then I applied glue to the dados and dropped the cabinet into place. As a side note, don't forget to install your pole supports onto the pole as well before you rotate it into place. I forgot, but was able to get them on after the fact simply because I cut that pole slightly shorter than the wall-to-wall -wall distance, and there was just enough space for me to slide them on, though I did scratch the new paint a little in the process. Don't tell my wife. Once I got that all squared away, I applied the glue to the top of the cabinet, installed the top shelf, and then used the toolbox again to apply pressure as it dried. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, so it probably looks like it's loose in there and it is um once this glue dries tomorrow when i come back to start this again because i'm done for the day i located this piece there specifically because there's a stud right there a fire break right there 
So that's going to get screwed in to there and it's going to hold everything back and in place. And uh, then we just need to attach the brackets for the pole. Um, I and mean, then I got to figure out what I'm going to do about um, trim on the sides here. But looks good. I decided to make a single continuous piece of trim in a U shape in order to slide them over the ends of the shelves in such a way that they would completely cover the gaps between the walls and the shelves on both the top and bottom as well as the front and completely hide those gaps with a single piece in an aesthetically pleasing way. I did this by making multiple passes on the router table so as not to take off too much material all at once. Once I got them all routed out, I used my terrible chisels and even worse chiseling skills to square off the ends so that they would mate up perfectly with the edge of the shelves. Surprisingly, they came out really good in spite of the circumstances and fit perfectly. I couldn't have been happier. Doing it this way served to not only cover the gaps all the way around, but also provided support for the shelves on the bottom. After I got them all chiseled out, I applied edge banding to the top, bottom, and front exposed edges that would not be sitting against the wall when installed. After that, I pre-drilled the countersunk holes that would be used to fix them to the wall. Next, I screwed that center support that I mentioned earlier into the stud in order to secure the whole cabinet to the wall, and then applied some really thick, rubbery, double-sided Gorilla Tape to all three of those back supports to attach the mirror to the back of the cabinet and hold it securely in place. Finally, I attached the hanger pole supports and my trim support pieces for the shelves to the wall, which was as simple as sliding them into place over the ends of the shelves and securing them to the wall through the pre-drilled countersunk holes. It's definitely not the most fancy or complex closet built in, but it's a huge improvement over what was there before, both functionally and aesthetically. The current plan is to just leave it open as it is now, but we always have the option of installing another door at some point if we choose to. Those trim pieces ended up looking and working out great, and overall, both me and my wife, which, let's face it, is the most important factor here, are very happy with the results. We now have a convenient place to hang not only our own coats, but those of our guests as well, not to mention dedicated space for our backpacks and other bags, my motorcycle gear, and whatever else we want to store in there. And that's all I have for you this time around. If you got anything useful out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel and to ensure future content. I'll be posting the next video, which is a how-to build video from my American flag crosses, as soon as I can get it edited, hopefully in a few days. That will be followed by a string of other build videos as I get ready for several shows that I have coming up to include things like flags, coat racks, and various concealment boxes. So make sure to select the all notifications with the bell icon if you want to be notified when they come out. If I missed anything or anything wasn't clear enough, feel free to comment below and I will respond. Thanks again for making it this far and I'll see you in the next video. As always, take care and happy woodworking.